I'm Margaret Frondorf, Director of SIS Alumni Relations, and I'm here in Santa Cruz, California, interviewing Ronnie Grun, class of 1962, and it's March 16, 2012. And Ronnie, we're here to just find out about um, your views of SIS and, and how it impacted your life in, in ways that uh, have led to you to such a prosperous uh, career. So let me open um, with, a, with a broad question to ask, how, how did you find SIS? Well, I, was, um, I went to high school in New York City. I was very much involved with uh, friends whose parents worked for the United Nations. I had an international background. I went to college. I majored in political science. I emphasized international affairs. I wrote my senior thesis on the plebiscite in the Cameroons. Uh, I was interested, I think, probably because of the historic times in newly independent countries, Africa and so forth. And I imagined myself working either at the United Nations or as a foreign service officer when I grew up. So I looked around for various master's programs which would prepare me for my career. And I was attracted to SAIS over Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, which seemed the other option because A, it seemed to have a stronger African Studies program, and B, because it was in Washington, D.C., and I was more attracted to living there than in Medford, Massachusetts. So that's how I got there. So um, I guess Johns Hopkins, too, had, it was, it was the, 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 the reputation for SICE was evolving, and it was finding its way into the... Um, the lexicon of uh, graduate schools. Yes, but very much the idea was that it was a master's program leading to practical careers. It was not perceived in those days as something that led to an academic career, which I wound up following, uh, but rather a kind of prep school, a high quality prep school for people going into a practical endeavors. So your most vivid memory of size. My most vivid memory of SAIS, um, I don't think there's one, but in any event, was arriving at uh, Florida Avenue, finding a rooming house to stay until I could find better quarters, and noticing that A, I had very little money and my scholarship situation was unclear, and eating for the first three or four days at the... Um, um, at a drugstore that was at the corner where pretty much where uh, the Hilton Hotel is nowadays. It was a large drugstore. And I would go down there and have grilled cheese sandwiches and such. And thinking this wasn't all that much fun. <laughs> but also thinking that my classes, which I was beginning to attend, were fun. And that I could probably settle in and down and eventually it would be more pleasant. And so what was the most memorable course that you took? The most memorable course I took, oddly, was not my African politics course, which uh, had about, I think, five or six, maybe seven people in it, but rather uh, an international law lecture class. I had studied international law as a graduate, which was taught by a very senior elderly uh, professor Thayer, very well known and which immediately engaged my interest and uh, didn't make me necessarily deviate from the Africa course, but that was certainly in the first few weeks the most impressive uh, course. And talk about size fitting into your a career and your accomplishments. Maybe talk a little bit about that. Well, I've really valued uh, my education at SAIS, and I've told very many of my students that SAIS is a good stepping stone to even other higher education, because the exposure to Washington, D.C., the exposure to current events, uh, the exposure to the quote-unquote real world was considerable. And had I gone straight on into a Ph.D. program, I would have immediately gotten grounded in academic minutia of various academic views and so forth. And there was a lot less of that. The, it, so I felt that the two years at SAIS was actually a real benefit later on when I went into the PhD program 
because I had gotten a very different exposure and experience than my colleagues who went straight from college into a PhD program. The disadvantage of SAIS was that so many people really had no very deep academic interests and were just preparing themselves for practical careers. And so in my second year, I began to feel that things had gotten a little superficial and in some ways even repetitive. So I was eager to then go on and get grounded in a PhD program because Saïs, rather than leading me to feel that I now needed to go on the job market, actually led me to feel that I wanted to learn more and learn it more deeply. And so I have always had the most, the greatest respect for the experience I had at Saïs because it led me really to do what I eventually wound up doing rather than turning me off from it. And you wound up doing? I wound up uh, getting a PhD at University of California, Berkeley and to have a um, very long, I'm now retired, uh, career as a professor of politics. I, along the way, also did stints as administrator. I was a chairman of my department. I was a social science dean. I was an academic vice chancellor. Um, all of those uh, administrative uh, gigs were interesting, but it never really led me to feel that I wanted to become a permanent administrator because I was always too interested in, um, in um, the sort of more academic side of it. Um, even to this day, and I still teach occasionally, uh, Sai's uh, training has actually influenced the way I teach. For example, I make reading the New York Times a requirement of all my courses. Nobody in their right mind would do that, who didn't have a sort of Sai's exposure to the more, you know, everyday practical uh, aspects of the world. Uh, colleagues who do the th things I do may themselves read the New York Times, but don't require students to plug in whatever they're learning into current affairs. So I think science deeply marked the kind of academic I became, mm -hmm. and not just uh, a kind of layway station to other things. And advice that you uh, offer to science students today as they uh, embark on their careers, perhaps? Uh, ideas on that? Well, I mean, it depends on whether you, you know, going to work for an NGO or the government or whatever. Um, I, any number of students that I've sent to SAIS over the years, and I've actually sent very many students to SAIS over the years, um, some of them had the same attitude that I did originally, which was to do two years and then get a job, and many of them wound up actually getting PhDs on their own, including some at SAIS, and they're now in the government. Mm -hmm. So I guess my advice to people going to SAIS is, go for the purpose you thought you were going, but then keep your mind open as to whether or not you want to further specialize or whether you want to go on to the job market. Um, I think SAIS is a sort of place, if you take advantage of it, you can A, learn a lot, and B, do very well. And if you just look at it as a kind of a finishing program to get through, uh, you're not going to get all that much out of it. I think there are very two paths you can take while you're there. And is there anything else that you want to share, um, you know, with me now, and, and um, a question perhaps that I haven't asked, just to conclude. Well, I, you know, I think the schools like SAIS are very excellent schools, and however, they need to kind of uh, stay up to date. And that's hard to do because so many of the faculty are, have daytime jobs, and so they kind of often ramble off the daytime jobs. And I think both for um, even post-SAIS careers that are uh, in government or in international agencies, the more serious grounding you can get in things like economics and history and so forth, the better off you're actually going to be. I taught for a year at SAIS in the late 1970s, and I noticed that very many students uh, sort of had the attitude, well, I'm here and I want to get out. I just want a job. And I really tried to urge them of taking advantage of their time at SAIS because it's really kind of up to you. You're an adult whether you're going to get a deeper grounding 
than just sort of getting by. And I think Saïs has really two kinds of students. Those are just trying to sort of think about their next their first job or next job, and those that are, you know, looking for at least a semi-academic experience. And I would just urge them to take advantage. I mean, Saïs has a lot to offer, but you have to take advantage of it. You can get out of Saïs without too much um, uh, grounding. And the, one of the virtues of Saïs is its interdisciplinariness. And that was a virtue even in the early 60s. I, I had had no serious economic background, but I became literate in international economics, which has helped me and has helped people who have gone into government and so forth. So take advantage of that interdisciplinariness rather than resenting it and thinking, oh my god, I've got to study economics, I'm really just interested in diplomacy. It's one of the real virtues of that school and similar schools is that you can, in fact, study things in diverse fields and you ought to take advantage of it. The other thing I would say is in this globalized world nowadays, um, people ought to take serious advantage of the language training that the school gives because uh, you're so much ahead of the game if you can communicate or at least semi-communicate in another language. It's one of the virtues that Saïs has had is to, uh, you know, nail you into a language in, in some fashion. So, yeah, the advice is take advantage of what it has to offer rather than grumbling about, you know, trying to find a job. Well, Ronnie, thank you so much. Um, you're celebrating your 50th year since you graduated from SAIS uh, right. this year, April 2012. And um, that's, a, that's a major milestone, and it's, it's extraordinary. And... We congratulate you, and um, we also thank you now uh, for this interview today. Well, so, th thank you very much for coming.